I am in Virginia to give a speech at a conference tomorrow. It's actually pretty similar to what I did last year in March in Barcelona. When I was at that uh, Teva Pharmaceuticals conference, pretty much the same thing. I'm giving a 30 minute speech tomorrow. I'm not the keynote uh, at this conference. This is for the Innova Heart and Vascular Institute. <laughs> So this is a conference all about patient experience. There's gonna be nurses, some nursing majors, students, graduate students, some physicians that are gonna be here uh, to talk about how to make patient experience better. <laughs> I'm so hungry. But as I was getting back to the hotel, I saw a red lobster. I haven't had red lobster in a long time. I just remembered why I don't go to red lobster anymore. Oh, I do not feel well. Good life decisions. Good life decisions. Yeah. I forgot the AC cable, the power cable for my Mac, so I don't think I'm gonna be doing any editing this weekend. Okay. I need to do some rehearsing for the speech tomorrow, but I just wanted to take a second to talk about the fact that this, this event is the persistent story that I was talking about in that uh, vlog I put up recently. And to be fair, I didn't actually talk about it in my vlog. I talked about it in Nevin's vlog. The long and short of it is that the conference organizer reached out to me last May? Maybe nine months in the works. Um, at one point, for a few months there, it was almost radio silence. I didn't think it was gonna go through. Um, I don't think she thought it was gonna go through either. A bunch of different people from the committee uh, you know, left and changed. The head of their department left, and there was a new person, and they had to change the date, and all sorts of things kept happening behind the scenes but I kept kind of just kept checking in with them every few weeks, touching base. I think we had probably, I don't know, seven or eight phone calls and at least 20 emails back and forth over the last like eight months that eventually led in me being here in Virginia to give a 30 minute speech tomorrow for this conference. Oh. So I just wanted you to know how powerful persistence can be and hopefully tomorrow It'll all pay off. Time for the conference. that you're all doing. Keep your, <laughs> keep, your hands out. keep your hands out like this, ready? Left hand, thumb down, palm out. Right hand, thumb down, palm out. Take one arm, cross it all the way over the other, lock your fingers together, keep your, wiggle your thumbs, wiggle your shoulders, and go like this. <laughs> Magic, yay! <laughs> the way the math works out, we meet an average of three new people every single day. Three new people every day of your life on average. Will you use those three opportunities today to make your life and the lives of the people you meet better? Now you and I both meet higher than the average amount of people because of the nature of our jobs. I do this, I meet people all over the world, people that look just like you, and I meet people nothing like you all over the world. I meet people with different belief systems, backgrounds, cultures, religions, languages, ideologies, and so each and every day I am reminded that our world is a shared experience but it's fractured by individual perspectives. You have a perspective that's different from yours, that's different from mine. Now imagine if we could all understand each other. Wouldn't that be a better world? And that's what we're gonna chat about in our brief time together today, how to make better and more meaningful connections with the people in your life, personally and professionally. But in my experience, 
That is as long as I'm allowed to talk after being introduced as a magician. Before I'm required to do a trick, I can feel people like, that's very nice. Find my card. <laughs> Pull a rabbit out of your hat, something, anything. They're all the same length, yes? One person at the back. <laughs> it's going to be a great show. Uh, it's an illusion. It's an illusion. Look, if I take the ends and I hold them up, now they look like they're the same length. The ends do. I didn't say it was a great illusion, I just said it was an old illusion. <laughs> Alright, I'll prove it to you. Here we go. That's the big one right there from the beginning. That's the uh, medium one right there. That's the small one right there. Now, there's too many things going on, right? Three, three ropes, two hands, ten fingers. So I'm going to get rid of one of the pieces of the rope. It'll be easier to follow with only two, won't it? Maybe I should just start off with only one, be a little bit simpler with the only one. But you know that this trick wasn't done with one piece of rope. It wasn't even done with two pieces. It was actually done with... Two of us watched Sesame Street. That was great. That was... <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the big one right there from the beginning. That's the uh, medium one right there. That's the small one right there. Can you tell which one's which from the beginning? Can you tell? You see, this is the big one. That's the big one. That's the medium one. That's a small one. Little illusion for you to think about. <laughs> but the real secret of the trick, the real secret of magic, is taking on and understanding different perspectives, different points of view. So think back to the rope trick. What happened there? You know, you're all like, yeah, that's what we've been thinking about. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> Well, what really happened there? It seems like you and I had a very different experience, doesn't it? I mean, think about what happened. What did I see? I saw the moves. I saw the juggling. I saw the sleight of hand. I saw the secret. Right? What did you see? You saw the ends of a rope jumping on and off, three different ropes, changing length and possibly. But that's just what we saw. What did we feel? You may have felt amusement, hopefully wonder, maybe frustration, <laughs> possibly anger. <laughs> I felt focus. These are not two different experiences. These are two different perspectives on the same experience. See, magicians have a unique dilemma. A magician is the only person who cannot see the magic. Why? Because I know how the trick works. And that knowledge of the secret is a limiting perspective. So a magician must completely, in order to create wonder, we must completely take on the point of view of the audience. We do it night after night, no matter who's out there, no matter what your background is or where I am in the world, and it always works because magicians have learned a technique called perspective taking. Perspective taking is the ability to see the world from the point of view of another person. Especially important if you're debating or arguing. How often do we get to the end of an argument only to realize we've been agreeing the whole time? <laughs> the problem with that is that once you intellectually realize you've been agreeing, the feeling, the negative feeling of having argued stays with you and it does affect relationships. When you ask meaningful and relevant questions, when you listen to understand, not just to respond or to reply, and you use your ears, I think you'll find you can make better and more meaningful connections with the people in your life, personally and professionally, drastically improved mine, on and off stage, and I really believe it can help yours as well. You have no idea what kind of opportunities await you just on the other side of that next connection. Our world is truly a shared experience. Imagine if we could all feel understood. Thank you very much. You're really welcome. Finding a quick moment to myself, I gave the speech. It was fantastic. Great response from the audience. Uh, great response from the organizers. Everybody's thrilled. Uh, they asked me to stick around to be on a panel, so I'm gonna go be on a panel in like 10 minutes. And uh, I don't know, Q and A from audience people who've been in attendance. And then after that, heading to Baltimore to visit my mom. Regular viewers will remember that my mom lives in Maryland, so I'm going to head on up and visit her for the day, for the weekend actually, since I'm close enough, just like an hour away. Although an hour away at four o'clock on a Friday, I'm sure there won't be any traffic driving into Baltimore. <laughs> So weird. You just walked out of a parking garage and into into a, like a hotel apartment thing. So I haven't had a chance to tell the viewers that you guys used to see me at my mom's house in Maryland so many times. That house is no more. She sold the house. 
that giant house for a 1,000 square foot? Yes. 1,000 1, square foot apartment, but like right near work. How long did it take you to do the drive like for all those years to get to work? Between 45 minutes and two and a half hours. Yeah, so saving like three hours of driving a day now by having a <laughs> having an apartment that's like 10 minutes from work. But uh, I'm gonna be the first, am I the first guest, like period? Yes. First anybody who's seen it besides the people living in it is, is Randy home. Randy's not here at all this weekend? No. Sorry, Randy. <laughs> We're having fun without you. <laughs> oh my God, the cat's here. The apartment, yes. Raven. She owns the place. Of course she does. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my gosh, Raven. Remember me? There she is. Remember me? I hope you don't make a face. If you don't like it. Uh -oh. Ooh. No, it's good. It's really good. Ah, tequila. <laughs> That's my mother over there freaking out that I don't drop the margarita in her new apartment. Isn't the manchego really good? It is so good. Lindsay always gets concerned when I'm on the road that I don't eat enough. And she's like, make sure you remember to eat. I'm like, I'm going to visit my mom. There will be plenty of food. Yeah. <laughs> I, I walk away from visiting you like 10 pounds heavier. Well, I'm going to, uh, I have mozzarella too if you want. No, no. Well, I have the balls. <laughs> speaking of balls. You got the, <laughs> speak, I, speaking I, of balls, all good stories start like that.